have any penis jokes. <laughs> How do you define a good day? For me, if I don't start peeing before my pants are down, that's a good day. <laughs> if I'm even thinking about peeing, it's already too late. <laughs> I always assume I have to pee and I'm always right. <laughs> my brand of adult pads is called Free to Pee, You and Me. <laughs> Laugh as hard as you want, ladies, on the rag once again on the road to total incontinence. <laughs> I gave myself a big surprise party for my 70th. If you don't think turning 70 is one big fucking surprise, <laughs> we all come from the family, and as we know, the family is the scene of the crime. Home is where the horror is. <laughs> to say dysfunctional family is redundant. I was definitely homophobic. <laughs> Game show idea. Blameless. Five contestants who never had children tell their stories. And the audience votes on who made the greatest contribution by not passing along her emotional DNA. <laughs> My point of sanity was in not having children and the children I never had are grateful. <laughs> I am now organizing the Control Freak Olympics, where control freaks can speak openly and honestly about how hard it is to get other people to do what you want. <laughs> I have an opinion about every fucking thing, including the way my partner tells stories about his own life. I tell them better, of course. <laughs> I need a psychopractor for daily attitude adjustments. I often hear people lamenting their imperfections. I strive for imperfection. It would be a major step up from being totally whacked. <laughs> do I believe in a higher power? You bet I do. Carbs and marijuana. <laughs> people believe a lot of crazy shit with much less proof. <laughs> Two of the best relationships I've had in my life have been with scones. And I am here to tell you that it is better to have sconed and lost than never to have sconed at all. Still sconed after all of these years. Marijuana is the one addiction at which I draw the line. No way am I giving that up. <laughs> Mind altering? You bet. If you had access to my mind on some days, you would go out and buy it for me as an act of mercy. <laughs> if they did a print out of my thoughts, the thought police would arrest me. On a good day, I tread water in a think tank. <laughs> Helpful hints for things not to do when stoned. Do not initiate or send emails or texts of any kind whatsoever. <laughs> Perhaps your device needs a function that automatically waits 12 hours if it smells marijuana on your breath. <laughs> do not agree to do or not do or promise anything, for example. Let's live together. Let's get married. I will never want anyone else. <laughs> Do not convince yourself that carrot cake is a vegetable. <laughs> when I am stoned, I don't get the munchies. I reserve domain names. I now own more than 20. <laughs> Last August, there was a fire on our property. Mice gnawing through wires in the big barn, which rapidly burned to the ground. Some email, the barn burned down. Now you can see the moon. Really? Not seeing the moon was never my problem. <laughs> the insurance company was great moving us through the process. They paid what they had to. And then they canceled my policy of 27 years. Both you and your insurance company want the same thing. No claim. The odds are in your mutual favor or they wouldn't be in that betting business. So why drop me now? I'm the one they lost the bet on, but I lost too. Given what, given what the odds are in the betting business, I would, appeal, 
appear to be their ideal client. I mean, wouldn't you rather be with someone who's already bottled out? <laughs> the absolute worst part of the experience was dealing with what are called banks and financial institutions. I have a game show idea. Your call is very important to us. Five contestants, each given the same 800 number, and whoever gets through a human first wins. <laughs> However, we all know that getting through to a human doesn't mean all that much. And ultimately, it will come to, may I put you on hold? <laughs> Where do you go and what do you do when you put me on hold, you fucker? <laughs> I sucker. I've been waiting this long for exactly what? Here is a job description for somebody who works in customer service. Able to accept verbal abuse from desperate customers. Don't fret. You will never get to speak to the same person twice and nobody knows your name. Must be able to say, may I put you on hold? As many times as is necessary in a manner suggesting that perhaps you have an idea that will yield a result any fucking result at all. <laughs> Remember, you are not your job. It might be your job to participate in the charade of a, part of a department called customer service. But some stiff drinks and some good weed can put that behind you daily. <laughs> I'm starting an agency called Ragers for Hire where people with unresolved anger issues can represent you in dealing with these corporate fuckers. <laughs> if you have a job, a family, or a life, and cannot devote the kind of time it takes to hold on and on and on, you can hire us. With a bulldog determination and a nasty pit bull gene, we will work you up the shit ladder to speak to someone with a first and last name. Rageaholics will get it done. Perfectly perfected rages of verbal decimation, reserved for those nearest and dearest, will now that unbridled energy can be channeled for the good. This line of work is also an excellent vehicle for the rageaholic to take you over the top, back to the edge, into that break town which up until now you have kept at a somewhat safe distance. I need an emotional circuit breaker. I highly recommend keeping a toolbox of dissociative techniques nearby at all times. I have invented a statue of limitations. Everyone gets one at birth, and then one day it runs out, and good thing, no one wants to go to the grave still right and angry. I digress. It's all about digressing now. People tell me that my segues have become confidential. I could always keep a secret, but now I keep it from myself. <laughs> I have learned that just because I don't remember something doesn't mean it didn't happen. And just because I remember doesn't mean it did. <laughs> my fault lines are still active. My father used to say that the first hundred years were the hardest. I used to think he was a cynic. Now I think perhaps he was optimistic. <laughs> I form a rock band of older post-menopausal women. We call ourselves the Dry Vaginas. <laughs> In this older time of life, dinner is earlier. Early is earlier. Late is earlier. I went from looking good to, wow, you look good for your age. <laughs> what happened to the burning bush that used to be between my legs? All I know is the bald eagle has landed. <laughs> the hairs on my legs made off with my libido. And the hairs under my arms have migrated to my chin. My new bra size is 36 long. <laughs> 60 is the new 60. 73 is the new 73. We are the olders. I'll talk to that. <laughs> At this very moment, all of us here are the oldest we have ever been. <laughs> <laughs>